So looking at my drawings, I'm given two angles and a non-included side are congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side of the second triangle. Because I have in this first triangle angle B and angle C, and those are congruent to angles E and F in the second triangle, I know by the third angle theorem that angle A and angle D must be congruent. This then sets me up to use the ASA postulate because I'll have now two angles and the included side. So let's go, that's how I'm going to go about proving theorem 4.6. Let's write this out formally. First, I'm given that angle B is congruent to angle E. Angle C is congruent to angle F and side AC is congruent to side DF. Next, I know that angle A is congruent to angle D, and that's by the third angle theorem, which means now I know that triangle ABC congruent to triangle DEF that is by angle side angle postulate which means we have officially proven the angle angle side theorem that if we have two angles in the non-included side congruent to two angles and the corresponding non-included side then the two triangles are congruent okay for homework I want you to write a proof for the following picture. So you are given the diagram as shown below or on your screen. You're given that X is the midpoint of VY and WZ. I want you to prove that triangle VWX is congruent to triangle YZK. And just to help you, remember we now have five ways to prove triangles congruent. The side 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 postulate, the side angle side postulate, the hypotenuse leg theorem, which is only for right triangles, the angle side angle postulate, and the angle angle side theorem. So whenever you see a proof that wants you to prove triangles congruent, you will be using one of these five ways. Best of luck, and if you're very curious, keep watching and I'll show you the solution.